was an absolutely fantastic win for Ireland over the Wallaroos at the weekend. It finished Ireland 36, Australia 10 in Belfast on Saturday. And to chat about this, I'm delighted to say Fiona Hayes is with us on the line. Evening, Fiona. Well, how are you getting on? Very well. So six tries for Ireland, a win against what was the fifth best team in the world. Uh, surely considered the, the best day under Scott Beeman so far? Yeah, it was. I was up at it myself, own, and it was a, an absolute cracking performance. Um, you know, obviously it was the 150th anniversary they were kicking off those celebrations, but from kickoff, it was all business by Ireland. I thought they were outstanding from the first minute to, to the end, and the bench that came on as well made a huge impact. Obviously, they'll have different areas they like to improve on going into WXB1, but as far as performance-wise, it's definitely the best I've seen with this squad in a long time. What development did we see from the end of the Six Nations to Saturday? Because you'd have to say the Six Nations was fairly satisfying in the aftermath, certainly where Ireland had come from going into that tournament. There were obviously some some tricky situations in that Six Nations, not least the England game, but there was progress. So have we seen further progress, even though we only have just Saturday to go off so far? Yeah, I think so. I thought they looked exceptionally fit. I thought, as I said earlier, the, the bench came on, made an impact. Um, their ability to put the foot down, especially in the second half of the game, you know, I hadn't seen that. And they were absolutely cutthroat when they got on top, especially in that second half, as I said. So there's been huge performances. But around the rock area in particular, I thought it was so good. The speed of ball, yes, the two nines were were brilliant. I um, mean, Emily Lane coming off the bench and Manny Scuffle McCabe started. And the speed of ball was, was really good, I'd say. I'd say three to six seconds was the max rock speed. You know, they really didn't slow down at any stage. But I felt it was the the actual breakdown was key to that as well and how they got over the gain line and that ball movement and placement and that rocking was so fast. It was brilliant to see. Would I be right in saying that certainly against some of the best teams in the Six Nations, having a fast rock speed wasn't necessarily in Ireland's playbook. It was... It was slowing the, the, the game down was, mm. was something that, that they went to. So, so this really is, just given the quality of opposition they were up against on Saturday, quite a big step forward. Yeah, it was. And there was um, a huge shift on attack. I saw, I thought the attack was was really good. And as you said, Owen, when you're when you're playing those big games, you're, I, I thought, especially against England, early were really tactical in, the, in that Six Nations game. There was a lot more kicking than I'd seen. Um, and look, that I suppose that was something they looked at against England. And and defensively, they were trying to slow down English ball. But once they got on the front foot against Australia, the attack really kicked in. And all the tries, of six tries, really creative. It didn't just come from the pack. There was some exciting backline moves out there as well. And, you know, you did change up at 10 um, when Dana O'Brien went off. You saw Enya Breen go in there as well. And she added pace. Um, and just, I think, I suppose, I think was that confidence to attack in saying that it wasn't the best Australian performance and I thought their line speed at times was was very lax coming up off the line. This is their first game they've probably played in a long time and I know they've been really injury hit but Ireland just kept that pace. They kept going and it was really good to see offloading game. They were on top of that as well. You mentioned the quality that Ireland have in depth now and that impact that they have off the bench was very interesting not least because of the uh, characters that they brought on but also when they were brought on and making six uh, changes in one fell swoop in the 52nd minute was was an interesting one and it allowed them to reconfigure the back line uh, a little bit that was uh, that was a very interesting move yeah, it was. And, you know, I absolutely love seeing that as a coach as well. It's, it's, we've seen it with South Africa, especially over the years and how they bring on their bench. And it just adds severe intensity to the game. And I thought the girls that came off the bench definitely provided that. Um, I thought Erin King came into the fold and she was absolutely exceptional. Um, you know, that's, it's, it's the ability to do that. Stacey Flood came on, she had some lovely touches. And as I said, when Emily Lane got into nine, she just added an extra pace to the ball as well. So it was interesting to see. And he spoke about that pre-game as well, that, you know, that they have a really good, really strong bench. And he, I felt like in his pre-match chat that he was definitely going to bring him on nice and early. And, and we saw that as well with Cleena Maloney getting on. You're listening to Fiona Hayes on Monday Night Rugby and Off the Ball, which is with Bank of Ireland, a proud sponsor of Connacht, Leinster, Munster and Ulster Rugby. 
never stop competing. One of my favourite moments, and I think probably everybody's favourite moment from Saturday was Emer Considine back in an Ireland shirt, scoring the try, giving this brilliant emotional celebration with all of her teammates. We had her on the show a few weeks ago and she was talking about missing the... Uh, 2023 Six Nations because of uh, the birth of her child and then obviously having to deal with the ACL injury after that and she was only back playing a few weeks ago after that injury obviously playing for your Munster team Fiona so you'd have had a a fairly close view of that recovery that comeback and I'm sure you were absolutely thrilled for her on Saturday. Oh, I was absolutely overjoyed. It's such a, a, an amazing story for her to have. And even the pictures ap- after the game with, with her son on the pitch, it's just, it's brilliant to see. But I suppose Emer spoke about it as well when she was on with you guys. You know, you don't you don't understand if you're not there, the, the pain of, of ACL injuries, of not being able to play rugby, even like I'm retired now. And sometimes you're just looking at the game and all you want to be is on that pitch. And I could see that with Emer and especially with Munster throughout the summer, there was times I suppose where she really had to slow down and monitor that ACL but was constantly at training always on the side and if she wasn't able to do contact running up and down and the minute she got back in that pitch for Munster and you could see she wanted to command that back line at full back and for her to start there I I, I actually didn't see it coming myself um, because I suppose just with the the game, she hadn't played a lot for us as well. But once she got out there and it was just, she was such, she was at home in that green jersey and she really took ownership. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see her in that WXV1 starting team against New Zealand in the next game. Definitely. The the comeback is astonishing, really, just how quickly it's all happened for her. Like at, at what stage in training did you realise, Jesus, this could this could actually happen for her? She she really has come back uh, and has got back to not only full fitness, but, but onto a different level. Yeah, and look, we actually had her named in a in a squad earlier as well, and she had a little setback in training, and she was pretty upset about the hamstring, that. Hamstring, right? Like, uh, your bang on hamstring, and we were talking with her. We fitness tested her before the game, and you know, we know Emer would be like, "Yeah, yeah I'm going to play," but. Look, if it maybe if she had played, if she mightn't be where she is. So medical, everyone decided. Look, we're going to take her out, give her another couple, a week and a half, and and and, and leave her at it. And her dedication to to coming out, she still came to game day. She's just brilliant to have around those players and her whole attitude in general. Um, I suppose once she got over that, he coming back into the game where we named her on the bench, I could really see her flourish. And I think it was, I suppose, once she knew she was going to play and she got into that contact side of things, that was only a few mo- a few weeks before those Interpro games. I suppose she was allowed to do that contact. You could see she was ready and she was definitely going into take herself right to the top. Did you see a level at those Interpro games, Fiona, from being involved with them as a as a coach that was a level above last year? Are, are you seeing this provincial system for what it is at the moment, certainly during that series, as something that, that is really helping the progress of players who are going to be wearing the green of Ireland? Yeah, look, I do. And there, there probably wasn't a lot of... I suppose those girls that played inter pros, you know, wasn't there's obviously girls coming in from England, they're sevens contracted girls. So um it's it I think it's creating healthy competition because the standard of inter pros were were so good. I thought maybe, you know, a couple of our girls, Chisholm and Alana, went out, went up to camp. I, I was looking forward to maybe seeing them, but but the, the girls, when you're going up against Amy Lee Murphy Crow and she's yeah. just outstanding, you understand these girls are training din- day in day day out complete athletes and I think I suppose with the standard of Interpros and where it's getting better and better these girls are now getting a chance if they can perform in Interpros to get up to camp and you never know what will happen up there you can get yourself into Jersey I'm sure if you asked Emer three weeks um, like her hamstring niggle was maybe four weeks three weeks before she was even called by Scott if you'd asked her absolutely not she would have said she wouldn't have envisioned starting that Australia game so it's all about working hard and the standard is definitely getting better and better definitely from what I've seen um, Leinster coming out winners and they were absolutely exceptional on that final day physical and that has transferred from you know Aoife's wafers performance in those Interpro especially that last game I mean she absolutely ripped us apart in Munster at times and to just see her the last day I said yes this girl is world class and she certainly provided some amount of she turnovers huge carries off the base of the scrum huge hits and you know watching her in the interpose when she rose again up to Ireland you can see they're well able to lift it to another level again Right because that was actually one of the things I was meaning to ask you was about where you would 
Like, how, how high would you rank Aoife Wafer at this stage? She's still only 21. I think her, only her first start for Ireland this year and this year's Six Nations, wasn't it? And uh, two tries, obviously, at the at the weekend. So you'd, yeah. con- you'd consider her right at the top of the game in terms of back rows in the world? I th- well, look, I know she's, I suppose it's quite young, but she's had two, you know, she's had a really good Six Nations. She's carried it into. So I think the way she's playing right now, you can't take away from that. I mean, you know, you've your exceptional back rowers throughout, you know, England, France, we know them. You've got Marley Packer and there's just some amazing players in Scotland as well and, and Wales. And it's the hardest position for you to, to say who's world class because there's so much competition. But 21 years of age, what she is doing at the minute, each performance, I think she spoke after the game. I was actually covering it and um, I, I had to choose the, the player of the game. And I was thinking, God, she ripped us apart for Munster. Here. But there's no way you couldn't, you could not give it to her every she had me cheering jumping out of my seats with some of the turnovers I love to watch it and I suppose when I I started as a back rower myself but I I, I was too slow to, to ever make it I had to go push myself up to the front row but what she does and you know I love that the turnover side of the game the defence side of the game and if you follow her off the ball and how she's tracking and getting in that and I think the best back rowers are able to judge when to go for for the post and she's definitely up there at the minute in that decision making around that and it's just super turnovers and her carries her footwork are just going to get better and better So what this means for Ireland amongst other things is that they're up two spots to seventh in the world Mm -hmm. rankings and this is the highest place that they've been since August 2022, uh, their previous best was fourth back in 2016. And you ally that with some of the mood music around this camp. Uh, Kleena Maloney, who obviously you definitely listen to about what this camp compares to other camps. And she says, we don't want to talk about the past too much, but it's a world apart from many different programs I've been involved in. That's what she said uh, at the yeah. outset of this camp. You'd have to say that things are trending in the right direction here. Absolutely. And I even think um, getting uh, Steenson in as a kicking coach, I think that was absolutely huge for this squad as well. Um, I thought some of the kicking, Enya's kicking, Dana, it's 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 just getting better. And I know Nicole Fowley is up at camp as well. And you can see that this team, you know, they 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 like a big boot. And um, you can see having a kicking coach there, that that's also going to improve. But the technical aspects, I think, of that coaching staff, you, Hogan, I've only heard good things about him. And, you know, for... For a coaching staff to come in, obviously the head coach stayed the same, but there was big changes. Um, three new coaching staff came in, and Maz Riley's come in as well. Um, to do with a coaching internship and to transfer so seamlessly and see have a I I thought there was a slight change in their defence. I didn't think there was there was they were coming up hard on the inside, probably a little bit softer on the outside. So to be able to pick up that in a couple of weeks up with new coaches, it just shows you what how positive and how good this environment it is. And these players seem to be flourishing it. And you know what as well, Owen, it's the competition up there as well. You see that bench, you see Aaron King coming on, you're you're Adele. McMahon or Brittany Hogan and you're saying oh my god look who's coming behind me on the bench and I suppose it's keeping everyone on their toes as well week in week out and putting those things into practice against tougher opposition is going to be the next step for this and New Zealand, USA Canada are going to be their opponents at WXV1 for people who aren't quite aware and Canada are ranked third in the world and New Zealand obviously second uh, USA in eight so uh, they'd be hoping to beat USA I'd suspect and then hoping to try and put in a, a good account of themselves against New Zealand and Canada or, or is there a chance of an upset against Canada Fiona or, or, or how do you look at this WXV1? I think Canada I've watched them and um, they're pretty good at the minute and um, they beat New Zealand in, in right. their last competition so um, they have their eyes um, they're always really good in women's rugby and I'm sure they have their eyes set on this um, World Cup in England so I, I think they'll be probably just a little bit too tough for now I will say at the moment I think it's top four and everyone else behind it, say from from five to ten, I think have a chance of beating one another. So I I really believe if they can if they can put in a performance and keep that confidence up, I get they'll definitely take USA. And you know it's it's when you look at those other three games, at the, I think it's about how they perform. They're going to have different areas they want to focus on and look at. And Ireland are heading into a World Cup as well. And you know, um, I watched I watched a couple of games and and I think this Irish team are on the up and they'll certainly maybe WXB might be too too close for now, but I think if in this World Cup I think they'll take a scalp of someone big. 
Right, you've heard it here first. Uh, very exciting times, <laughs> uh, Fiona. Great to hear from you and I'm sure we'll uh, be speaking to you as the, the season clicks into gear for, for men's rugby as well as women's over the next few weeks. But uh, a great first Monday night rugby of the new season, if we can call it that, Fiona, because I know you've been working all summer. Thanks a million. Cheers, Owen. Thanks a million, boy. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be chatting NFL next. Monday Night Rugby on Off The Ball with Bank of Ireland a proud sponsor of Connacht, Leinster, Munster and Ulster Rugby Never stop competing 